I don't even know how to explain it. I felt this weird, horrible energy and like a dread. And we stopped talking all at the same time. No one said anything. And I remember kind of looking over to my friends and they're kind of just like staring. And up on this cliff, this huge, huge black figure So then it's on its feet, and by that time, we literally all turned and ran. I mean, <laughs> there was no question. I'm not even gonna look anymore. I saw it standing straight and coming right at me, and we turned, ran as hard as we could. You're listening to The Cryptid Creatures Show with Brian and Todd. If you're enjoying the show or would like to submit an encounter, visit our website at www.cryptidcreatures.net, or you can email us at info at cryptidcreatures.co. Now back to the show. This is the Cryptid Creatures Show. I am Brian, and with me as always, we're right over there is my co-host Todd. What's up, buddy? What's happening, man? How you doing tonight? Great. Tonight we're going to bring on Taylor, and Taylor has seen a strange creature. I thought maybe this was a Bigfoot. I'm not sure. We're going to have to listen and uh, have her explain yeah, us what this is, thing is. So This is a pretty wild one. Strange. So let it, yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. All right. Well, let's bring her on, man. Yep, let's get her. Hi. Hey, she is. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? We're doing good. Good. Um, nervous, but I'm excited. Oh, don't be nervous. Good. Don't you're, be nervous. You're fine. Just you'll be fine. Relax. Thanks for coming on and talking to us. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for having me. I'm super stoked. We're happy Absolutely. to have you. Awesome. We had been talking back and forth a little bit, and you had had an encounter with something very strange and creepy. Uh, mm -hmm. When did this happen? Um, I was about 14, so I'm 30 now, so like 16 years ago. Okay. So whenever okay. You, I'm terrible at math. So, yeah, Close quite enough. a while ago. And then um, where did this happen? What state or what general area, can you say? Yeah, I can, ironically. And it's kind of evolved since I talked to you guys because I'm – I didn't even mention the city in a Facebook post and like a bunch of my high school friends knew exactly what I was talking about, but it's, um, it's oh. right with California. It's where it's called Wrightwood. Wrightwood, w California. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. It, it's mountain high ski resort. Basically. Okay. It's a very small, small town, like 4,000 people. What's it close to? <laughs> what big city? Um, <laughs> when you're driving on your way to Vegas from like LA, uh -huh. you, get off you can get off on like an exit where there's a mcdonald's and like a del taco and a gas station uh -huh. del taco. that's the closest i love reference. del taco <laughs> <laughs> i do too yeah. i do too my wife and i drive if sometimes if we go to san diego or vegas we'll yeah. drive to one or the other that's like five six hours yeah we'll stop and see the uh, world's largest thermometer and eat at yep. the del taco right there so. yes yes so i was so basically i lived okay do you know when like you're a little bit closer and there's the cajon pass and there's like the mormon rocks yep i think that's i do exactly, that's where you get off and you make a left so those hills are weird if those rocks are very strange yep, in general. yep they are yeah, hilarious very very weird and now i'm learning now even weirder than i thought <laughs> okay so all right well, we yeah. like weird Take yeah, us back so, uh, years ago uh, and uh, tell us what happened. Okay. Yep. So it actually, the whole thing kind of started, like I mentioned, um, Christmas of 2001. Um, and we got a knock on the door 12 nights before Christmas um, to a poem and a manger, just like chilling on the doorstep. It was really weird. And uh, obviously 9-11 had just happened. <laughs> and uh, anthrax was going on. So my parents lose it. You know, they thought we were going to be murdered. Uh, and I, I get it because it was really weird. And every night it said they would bring another piece of the manger. And then on Christmas Eve, they would bring the baby Jesus and they would introduce themselves. And so my dad's like, yo, this is so weird. Like he did not like it. So it turns out that it was my piano teacher. Um, she, it wasn't that creepy, but it was weird. And my mom, of course, loved the idea because she was kind of funky like that. Um, but instead she decided, well, we're going to do the same thing, but we'll tell the parents. So that's kind of how this whole thing started. Um, so we did it every year. Um, seriously, every year until this point, what happened? Um, then we moved up to Wrightwood. So that happened in San Bernardino area. And then we moved to Wrightwood. 
So now we're up in the mountains in the middle of nowhere. Like I said, it's population like 4,000 people, very small town. And the street that I lived off of was like a dirt road. Um, now it's like a little paved, but not even fully. And it's at the bottom of a, like a quartz and salt mine. So when you're driving up to Wrightwood, if you're going to Mountain High, you take the two highway and on your way up, you see it. It's this big white pyramid. It's weird. So there's a lot of weird energy in that area in general. For instance, the other thing that I think is pretty important as well to the area is that the geography, there's like Joshua trees, right? Like that's all Joshua trees. Oh, yeah. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden, it's just forest. It's weird. And that's where you hit Wrightwood. So where I lived was like right in the middle. And I was talking to my friend earlier on from high school and she's like, no, you, you literally live right where Wrightwood starts. Like it's considered sometimes even feeling. So feeling California. So like I said, we're living on this dirt road in that area and I'm 14 at the time and there's like nothing to do. No, you know, like you do nothing. So I have some like kind of town friends that live kind of far away. We all hung together and they knew we did this and I had asked them if they wanted to go with me. And I will say this another weird thing. I don't know if this even plays into part, a little backtrack. Three weeks before this, uh, some of us had done like, well, like a little Ouija board session and I got in big trouble. I didn't know they were bad. So when my dad did find out, he was super upset. And I was with two people that I was there that night doing that with. So I don't know if that plays into effect either. It's kind of strange. So anyway, um, it's like our fifth night of doing this. And like some of these kids had done this with me before with this kid. And backstory on the kids kind of important as, as well. The kid was like, we always chose like downtrodden families. So like this kid was a foster kid and he lived at the end of our road. I mean, and it is deep in the pocket of like these weird ass mountains. So um, he was very lonely. The foster mom was in her like late fifties. She rented out like little cabins. She had like five cabins probably on this like big piece of property. And my mom knew her. I didn't really know her, but they told me the story. I'm like, let's do that kid. That sounds good. So the kids got excited to do him. So we all started doing, because he also would chase us. So all the kids wanted to, like, they were on a challenge too. So I'd always talk about like, man, this kid is fast. Like I need help. So eventually my friends at school were like, let's go. So we go out that night. It's me. And the, the, some of these kids, I don't know if they feel comfortable being named. Some of them don't even know I'm like talking about this. So I don't even want to like say names, but they're very good friends of mine. And then yeah, you don't have to say their names. That's fine. Yeah. Um, and my, my family, my, one of my family members, who's like my sister, I'm raised with her. So we're out there. My mom's in a, we had a Jeep Wrangler where you like pull the seats up to get into the back seat. And we go up this hill road and my dad knows we're going. He's like, be safe. So he's not there. So it's just me, my mom and these kids. There's four of us and me. And we're kind of sitting on each other's laps in the back seat and someone's in the front seat. And we've been talking on our way up this drive. Like my mom's like, okay, we're going to turn around because like the road gets too narrow. I can't get my car through. And like the kid was so fast that sometimes we'd be like running and we'd have to jump in and my mom would have to like go because he turning around was not an option. So she's like, do you guys understand? Yeah, for sure. So we get out and we're like, we're going to have our own plan. So we get out of the car and where we were, like I said, it was the end of the road, but it was like, kind of getting up higher where the mountains kind of come like up and down and where we were was straight, but then there was a turn to the left and there was like cliff road cliff. So right in front of us, it looks like a cliff. And then there's a turn that we're going to make. And then there's the house and we're whispering kind of quiet because sound travels out there and the moon is totally out. Like you can see everything. There was no question. There was no clouds, <laughs> full moon stars. You can see them when you're up there. It's super cold. And all of a sudden, I don't even know how to explain it. We, I felt this weird, horrible energy and like a dread. And we stopped talking all at the same time. No one said anything. No one was like, oh, shit, nothing. We just all stopped talking and we kind of stood there. And I remember kind of looking over to my friends and they're kind of just like staring. And we see like up on this cliff, this huge, huge black figure start coming up the cliff at us. And at first I'm like, I'm a smart kid and I'm all, I'm very skeptical as well. So I'm not like into this, like, I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in any of that shit. 
I'm like, is that a mountain lion? Like, I'm kind of like looking, but I felt like, no, something's really bad. <sighs> and it, I see all of a sudden this like arm thing where it's like shoulders are di like discombobulating out and has long, huge fingers, weird hands, long arms, long legs, weird torso, weird head. And it's crawling super like zombie fast up this hill. And I'm just in a daze in a trance. And all of a sudden, once it hit the ground, like, you know, like you normally like you're getting out of a pool and you have to like hoist yourself up. No, this thing was like, boom. And it kind of like floated, like it pushed itself straight up and it's coming at us now on all on two legs, not on four legs. It, when it was coming up four legs, it was on its feet and its hands. It was not on its like fours, you know? like a humanoid running weird. It was so weird. So then it's on its feet. And by that time, we literally all turned and ran. I mean, <laughs> there was no question. I'm not even gonna look anymore. I saw it standing straight and coming right at me and we turned, ran as hard as we could. I remember when I was running, my feet were like hitting so hard that I felt like the bones were like gonna break in my feet. It was crazy. And we didn't scream, I don't think. I don't even think anyone screamed. And we just piled in and once I pulled the seat up, like I was kind of the older one of the group. So I was kind of like mom embarrassed. So I was like, come on. Like, that's when I started screaming. I'm like, go, go, go. And I felt it chasing me the whole time. And when I mean chasing, it wasn't like how I've heard you guys' podcast about like Bigfoot, where it's like, get out of my area, you know? No, this was like, I'm gonna kill and eat. It felt like I was gonna be eaten. And I, and it's weird. Cause now later on I've done research and I look into it and I was like, oh my gosh, that's so scary it kind of nails what i think it is but um yeah it was terrifying and my mom was reading a book with the light on in the car and like not expecting us to be back anytime soon because we just basically left and she's like what's going on and we pile in and i'm like just go just go and she's she's driving and we're just screaming at the top of our lungs and she can't get us to calm down and we finally make it to kind of a base of a hill she pulled over and I still wanted her to keep driving, but she was like, no, you're going to tell me well, why we're driving. Like, what's going on? She was so upset. And I was like, um, we were attacked by, I said at the time, because I didn't know what anything was. I was like, a demon thing. Like, it was this big black and glowing eyes. That was the other thing. And she's like, no way. It had to have been a mountain lion. Like, automatically. I'm like, no, it wasn't. She's like, it had to have been a bear then. I'm like, it was not. And everyone in the back is agreeing with me. All the kids. I mean, we are hysterical. This is not like, I'm saying it as calmly as I am now. We are screaming at the top of our lungs. There's no way, there's no way. She goes, well, he rent, the, the lady, and I can't remember her name, but she runs cabins down there. It had to have been just like one of like a vagabond guy that's like climbing up the mountain. I'm like, no, that's not it either. That's also not it. It was, I cannot explain it. It was just a demon looking weird, horrible thing. So she's very frustrated. She's like, I'm gonna go back to the house and we're gonna call the lady that owns the house and we're gonna see what's going on. Cause I, you guys are crazy. And then my dad's home. And my dad's pretty, very extremely logical, extremely intelligent. And we get home, we're all hysterical. The kids can't get him to stop talking. And he's like, okay guys, come on, tell me what happened. So we tell him and he was like, a what? And I was like, dad, I swear, like, I know we sound crazy. Like, please, like, we can't go back. Cause mom, my mom wanted us to go back. It's like, she's like, if we find out that that's not anything, you guys have to go back. Like this kid's Christmas is going to be ruined. And I'm like, no, like, I don't care. We're not going back. So eventually while she's on the phone with the lady, it's confirmed. There's no people out. There's been no sightings of mountain lions in quite a while. So I'm like, no, I'm not See, my mom's like, see, that's proof that you're going. I'm like, no, it's proof that I'm not going is what it is. That's exactly what it is. So we all went home and I never went back to that kid's house. I feel really bad. I don't even, I feel horrible. I feel like I ruined his Christmas. He was probably like nine years old and gave up on Santa after that, but we just couldn't go. So then, yeah, that's what happened there. And uh, I've kind of blocked it out. And like our town is really small and very religious as well. I wasn't raised in that category, but I know a lot of people are, so it's not really talked about. And I know UFOs are mentioned, but like none of that. So we kept it under our broom of our hat. And I'm pretty sure all the kids that were involved all thought that if we said anything, we'd be seemed crazy. So we never said anything until I started dating my now husband. And um, I told him the story and he was like, wow, that's insane. I was like, it's a true story, I swear. <laughs> it's crazy. And I messaged one of the kids and I was like, do you remember that? And he was like, 
his message was insane. He's like, oh, I rem like it was many cuss words and very much so. I totally <laughs> blocked that out. Holy crap. And uh, so that verified that we all saw something, but then I still kind of denied it because like I'm still pretty logical. So I'm like, we all just imagine seeing something. It probably was a mountain lion and we were just tripping and we thought we saw something that we didn't see. Well, then I told you guys, I've always kind of told myself that even though I know I know what I saw. And then I talked to you guys and then I posted on Facebook that I was just gonna be on a podcast talking about a cryptid encounter and that's basically all it, is, all it said. And about five or six different people from school, many stories where they've encountered the same, almost exact same thing. It's either mm. crossed in front of them on a street in the middle of the desert, um, out near like that hot freeway when you're on your way to Vegas, but it's called Phelan. Um, many in Phelan and um, very similar gestures where it's walking on hands and feet and then it stands up and it cuts people off. Like I could send you guys stories. I was, today was mind blowing. I was like, wow, like it's verified now. I don't even deny what happened. It's pretty crazy. So. Yeah, definitely have the, those folks get a hold of us some way, somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Reach out yeah. to us. Uh, I don't know how you contacted us. It was just email or the website. but um, There was email, yeah. I yeah. mean, I think a lot of people, to be honest, are very... I even asked, like, would you want to be... I asked some people, like, would you want to? And they were like, nope, you can tell the story for me. I'm not interested. <laughs> it's a lot of... Sh it's weird. It's like weird shame. And, I, and I, I felt like that, too, for a long time. You know, like, I didn't want to tell anyone what happened made me sound it is, yeah, crazy. We, yeah we get a lot of that yeah mm -hmm. so hopefully they'll they'll talk to you guys yeah we had somebody actually email us before we started this show tonight uh, about a ufo i think i can't remember her name brian do you from remember the area name? yeah yeah from your area yeah, yeah one of your friends emailed us ah, i just hit my head so hard but yeah that's because that's so crazy that's crazy because i posted it celeste stars is what she yeah, they were posting a bunch of screenshots because I'm not in this group. There's like a Wrightwood face feeling Facebook group and I don't live there anymore. So, I mean, people know of me, but um, yeah, so, yeah, they were sending me so many screenshots of UFOs. And I saw a UFO when I was out there with my dad. There was, I had never thought, I mean, we lived in like a city. We lived in near kind of Orange County and I mean, I lived in Kansas, but Orange County is where I was mostly nearly raised. And so, like, when we moved up there, I thought we just lived in the middle of nowhere. I didn't expect to, like, ever see weird encounter stuff like that. And we did see the UFOs and, like, we had weird, ex like, experiences happen that were totally unexplainable a lot. And I totally think it's that area. And when I was talking to my friends earlier, they're like, it is a very strange place in California. It really is. I mean, like you said with the Mormon rocks, the minute you kind of pass through there, you see it. You're like, hmm. This place is weird. Like, it's different than the rest of California, it seems, like, a little bit. In that area, anyway. Well, it's like that whole that whole corner down there, that whole desert. Yeah. Those three or four states right there are just super active. hot, hot yeah. spots. <laughs> super hot, yeah. There yeah was especially for aliens. For sure. And I maybe that's what we're seeing is aliens. Because, like, there was definitely, I had a long message sent to me. Because one of my friends is like... I don't think at all in interested in, on being the podcast because I asked her, we were on the phone today and she was like, no. But her boyfriend saw, I think the exact same thing I saw where he went to go pick his girlfriend up, his car, I guess her car broke down and he's driving along the road. And at first he thought he saw like a, like a very malnourished coyote and it was on its hands and its feet and it saw him and it kind of lurched forward and it like looked and it like, that's when it stood up and it like crossed across the street. And he's like, dude, I booked it. It was like terrifying. <laughs> so like, I, I don't know if it's an alien or, but like it was all black with wow. glowing eyes and it had long ass fingers and it had long legs. And I think the only thing I've ever seen that maybe it could be was like the Wendigo, but I'm not sure if that's also considered like a skinwalker. Wow. I don't know. But similar. Well, your friend, if your friends don't want to come on the show, they can submit their stories on our website, this yeah. crypt, crypt Yeah, for yeah, sure. Tell them to write it down and we'll post it. Yeah. I'll tell them that I hope that they actually do because I'm glad that one person did with the UFO and I think I know who it is. I saw the post. It's pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. And they can be anonymous too with their post. That, 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 that's fine. Oh, yeah. that's good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I never, I mean, I went back recently to where that experience happened because I never went back actually until 
recently. Um, kind of when I discovered your guys' podcast, and I I went during the day because there's no way I'm going tonight. Um, but I did notice that the cliff that it came up wasn't, I used to think it was a 90 degree angle because I was a kid. So like from my perspective, it looked like it was a street, very steep drop off. It was still very steep. It was still like a good 70 degree incline. It's kind of like those videos where you see people doing like extreme sport mud wrestling mm -hmm. videos and they're like climbing and scaling walls. Like it was very, like you'd have to be like that, but its height was crazy and its eyes did glow and what was weird is when i posted one of my friends that i know very well was oh yeah i'm so glad you're helping put rightwood on the map everyone knows this story about the glowing eyes or something like that and i was like oh my gosh like wow. this is something people like there you go and yeah. it's really secretive i guess but okay we're gonna make your town famous yeah i guess so <laughs> speaking of that i was looking at your town on the map yeah you're right on the edge of the san andreas fault uh Angeles National or Angeles National yeah. Forest, and and it's right next to um, San Bernardino Mountain area. There's a lot of activity that I've heard goes on in that. 100%. But you guys are right. I mean, you're kind of in the mountain a little bit. We though. are in the mountain. It is. It snows wow, so all the time. Smack mm -hmm. in the middle of it. And I think the thing with the if it let's say was a Wendigo, or I don't know if like Skinwalkers are considered the same thing, but. I was reading on Wendigos later and it seems like, cause the shape of the head, not, I know a lot of them say antlers, but I know that's like Americanized. Um, it seemed more like that because it was winter and every story that I've been hearing, they're like, oh, it, it like when it starts to get cold, cause it snows up there, it snows in Wrightwood and it kind of snows in Phelan, but it is cold there. And there was a lot of native, you know, in, like villages in through there. Um, and a lot of them were either pushed out or wiped out, you know? So I think that there is a lot to be said about that. And I think the fact that we were going there during like Christmas time for, I don't know. I just felt like that whole thing seemed all very, like when you look up Wending or Wendigo, that's kind of like their thing is like, they hate greed and they don't, you know, whatever. And so, and cannibalistic tendencies. And I felt, I swear, I felt like I was going to die. And the other story was, even crazier that someone told me, which was very similar in what seemed like what happened with the car was two cars came head to head and one car saw something going on, but wasn't close enough. And as they inched forward, saw the other car turn around because there was something coming at that car. So my car booked it out of there and then the Wendigo approached it and they drove off. But I think that person has a better version of that story than I would. And I would try to talk them into telling you because that one seems like crazy to me too. Similar to what happened to me where it chased me down, you know, aggressive. <laughs> I would be um, more inclined to say that was a skinwalker than a Wendigo. Wendigos are more Are they separate? North they're woods. different, right? Yeah, they're totally different. Okay, that's what I thought. Because, I, I mean, some people were telling me today, like, oh, they're the same. And then some people were saying they were different. And I was like, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, they're totally what. different. Okay. But since you have a, a lot of Native American influence stuff around there, like... Uh, Yes. Old, old lands, old tribal lands. Yes. That would be more skinwalker-ish. That makes sense. Yeah. And I think that, I mean, I don't know if it's just only that. Like, definitely I'll have them reach out because <laughs> there's so many UFO sightings that it's absolutely surreal. The whole skinwalker thing, like, now I realize that there's way more of that there than I realized. And even who lives there. Um Oh, I said her name, but she, I don't think she'll mind, but um, cut it out. okay, cool. Yeah, we can cut um, it out. But she even said, she was like, yeah, um, I think that I've kind of said it for a while that this is turning into like, more of an issue than it, than we talk about. Cause they're like, they've been seeing them as of like a year ago when it comes to the skinwalkers or whatever they happen to be multiple sightings wow. like last year, six months ago. And like the last one that she told me about was on one of the main roads there. On is there something road. going on around there? Is there construction, new construction happening? Is there... I think so. I mean, I would assume probably because I have heard that I don't know as much because I don't live there anymore, but I would assume so as, I mean, California is getting so expensive, but I think that they're expanding out past mm -hmm. the normal realm of where they used to build. Are you close Cheaper. to a military base by chance? Yes, Wrightwood, definitely. I think... I mean, uh, for sure, Phelan, Victorville. I can't remember the name of the Air Force Base. Is it Edwards? No. I'm horrible with this. Maybe I could Google it. <laughs> but yeah, we were very close right. to definitely one. 
and then Palmdale. There's the one near Palmdale. Interesting. Palmdale gets a bunch of activity, and that's all in through there, like you said. We tend to hear about weird activity uh, a lot, especially close to military bases close to military, for some yeah. reason. I know. And we were very close. And I think we were even close to two. We were, like I said, near a fault line. There is that salt and like um, quartz mine right at the base of my where my house was, which is where that trail was to, or the the actual like street that we, the street we took um, to get to that boy's house. It's a dirt road. But like, if you guys were to go there, I think you would experience, you'd be like, whoa. Like you could probably write a whole novel on just that area alone. Cause it's just, the energy is really insane. And I think even like that mining caused some sort of issue. If there is any of that lore where, you know, they don't want to mess with the land, they definitely did. I mean, you can see it. It's like a huge white thing. I went to the top of it once and you can literally see all the way out to like where you were saying you go to Del Taco to stop at the needle, you know? You can see all the way out there from the top of that thing. It's crazy. Wow. So yeah, it's definitely an interesting town. <laughs> and it's cute to visit, but it's also like kind of, I'm like, I wonder if it's gonna become the new like known place maybe. I'll tell you visit. what, Brian and I will come maybe there and do a documentary. We'll, we'll do our best. And we'll yeah. interview you and all your friends and we'll do, put Heck a little yeah, story man. together. That would be amazing. We'll put you guys on the map somehow, some way with that. Yes, I would be so excited. They're so, I can't that believe be how many people were excited about this. Like, I could not believe it. It was shocking. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So, how close were you at your to, closest point to this creature? To that thing. Oh my gosh, super close. Um, I wish I knew feet better. <laughs> I'd say probably like 20 feet to it. We got close up on it. I could totally see every detail of it. So this thing climbed up on the side of the mountain and jumped over the ledge right there where you guys were at, basically, is what it did, saying. Yeah, and it didn't even, like, jump. It was effortless. It was more or less, like, creepy, zombie-like. It was, it was, I guess, it didn't seem effortless in the sense that, like, it floated, per se, or didn't try to make an effort. But it was very fast and very quick movement. How much <laughs> ground do you think it covered and how fast? It went up the full slopes and probably, oh my gosh, less than, it was like boom, boom, boom. It was like three steps, it seemed, that it went up this cliff. Hmm. Like that fast. And you could, wow. we heard something and I think what we were hearing was it running up and what I think we stopped was, was it coming up the cliff? Like we heard it running and then we saw it coming up is what we saw. And it was that fast. I mean, and when I went back, there's a, there's a little path trail that goes literally up where I was, down, and there's little pathways. And I'm like, that could be coyotes for sure. Like that's totally a, like a possibility. But like there is a shorter, like, I guess, incline over on the side. So why wouldn't they just go up the side and come around? Like they're not dumb, coyotes are not stupid. They're not gonna try to come up this like heavy ass incline, you know? So I don't know, it just seemed really strange to me that that path would be there. It's weird. So how tall do you think this thing was when it stood up? Huge. Um, like probably like seven and a half, eight feet tall. Can you describe all the details that you remember to us? In mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It had extremely long appendages that were very disjointed. Like um, you could see like its knuckles and its phalanges really detailed. It had really long pointed nails, kind of, but you couldn't see its nails, but you could tell like it had a point, you know? Its thumb was weirder than a normal person's hand. It seemed like kind of alien-y type thing. I don't know if that makes any sense. It didn't mm -hmm. come out like this. It kind of went like in like that a little bit. And it had the same, like, it kind of had like weird feet. It had like, I want to say bird feet, but that's not, I guess, clawed feet. Like it had toes though that were rounded and it came, but had haunches, like back leg haunches. Like it had three parts. Like a, legs, like a dog. I mean? Yes. Kind of like when, you know, like it wasn't a chupacabra because it was not, that's not what it was, but the, how they have like the three defined pieces to their foot, leg, thigh, you know, it was like that. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's like leg haunch was long. And then once it stood up, it looked very humanoid. That's at first, like I said, I thought it was an animal just based on it, but its movement was so demonic weird. Was it smooth? Was it hairy? Was it? It was smooth. To me, it was smooth. And that's what's weird is some people are saying what they've seen has hair 
And we also have Yucca Man out here, which is a thing. So maybe they saw Yucca Man. We've heard of them too. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, no, mine did not. It was smooth. It was black. It had glowing eyes that were like, I think orange, if I can't remember fully anymore, if it was yellow or orange or red. Someone said they saw, like I said, one of my friends said blue glowing eyes. And I was like, it didn't have blue glowing eyes. It had red or orange or yellow. Um, what shape was his head? Weird. It reminded me kind of of like Groot from whatever. That one movie. <laughs> you know <laughs> what I'm talking about. Galaxy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. It, it was like that weird, but it wasn't as like tall as that, but like it had it's almost like a bulbous like skull, you know, where it came out, protruded out sideways. Okay. Like really big brain. It looked like kind of type of thing. Maybe you guys were drilling down so far there and for the salt mine or whatever you guys were talking about that you hit something and got into yeah. some creatures up. area or something. And they're coming up. They're pissed. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. They inexplicably, I don't know if it's inexplicably, I haven't looked into it, so I shouldn't say inexplicably, but the rumors were, no, I don't know if it's true, that, that they stopped mining there. They said they ran out of stuff to mine, but it just seemed a little weird. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Mm. It's very, very odd in through there. So, And that's also like the Mormon rocks was like, they considered that, that's at the base of where you start going up to Wrightwood. That was considered very holy, and that was like the first sighting of, you know, that whole situation of the migration. So like, there was a lot of different things there that I think played in part to this situation. Do you remember any other details of his face? Did it have a mouth? Did it have a nose? Yes. Did it look did like a, a snout? human? Did it, have... it did look a little human in the sense that it had human-like features. It had cheekbones that were very defined. It had like a gaunt um, demon-like kind of face with like a very pointed chin. Um, the eyes were sunken in its head. Um, looked like a skull kind of like with a big bulbous head, but like it looked to me and I asked my friend that was there. I messaged him and I'll see if he ever responds back. He said he'll listen though to the show at the very least, but I was like, do you want to be on it? He's like, <laughs> he didn't seem very interested, but um, <laughs> yeah, he, I asked him, I said, was it just me or did you just run? Cause I didn't get a look at it. Once it hit the ground and started, I realized it was coming right at us. I didn't keep watching to see how it walked. I was very, I've always wondered how it moved or did it get back down on its fours and chase us? Like, I don't know, but I kept running and I didn't look back. And I said, did you look back? And he messaged me today and he was like, hell no. Like I kept running and I was like, okay, that's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure. But so I think that with its face, it, I didn't see its teeth, but I think you could tell that it probably had like long teeth just by the way its face was structured. Okay. It was really terrifying. It put off, it had a smell to me. I smelled like a weird, gross smell. And I thought about it at first. I didn't think I did, but I thought back and I'm like, no, I remember smelling. And I think maybe that's why I stopped because we were raised to be like outdoorsy kids. We rode horses. We were like, whatever. So I, like, I was kind of, I sensed a predator in the air very quickly, I guess. And I think we all did very, we all like, physically stopped at the same time without saying a word to each other. So that seems to me very symb symbolic of the situation, I guess, how much danger we were really in. So what do you think this thing was? I think I, I'm super torn. I've, I've, I've looked into the Wendigo so many times, but I don't know what blogs are real. You know, it's hard to know like what's actually legitimate. Um, I mean, they mentioned the Algonquin tribe um, first mentioning Wendigos and how, they were based off of being cannibals in um, the area. Um, and that's how they were turned into. I don't know if that's started. See, like, I'm such a skeptic. I'm like, I don't know. That sounds crazy to me. <laughs> like, you know, I'm over here thinking to myself, but apparently they turn into Wendigos. And that's kind of even like the Wendigo disorder that was initially, eventually like debunked, I guess, um, of not being a, a psychological disorder. But it's that's the cannibalistic type of thing. And I, that's the vibe I got. I didn't get the vibe. I've seen like YouTube videos, of skinwalkers. They kind of remind me a little bit of Bigfoot in the sense that they're protective, but maybe they attack. I'm sure, I know I've heard stories where they do attack, but I felt like it was going to kill me and eat me. That's the vibe I really got. I know I sound crazy, but that's how it felt. 
I just, I don't know. So I, I revert to that also because it was in December. It was winter where it snows. And allegedly, according to the lore, that's what happens with Wendigos is they come out during winter when it's cold. That's when they feed. Um, most of the stories I've heard of the sightings where they seem like that, it's either it's a skinwalker or a Wendigo or whatever the case may be, it's normally around October through December, the stories that I've heard from my friends now at this point or from people now in this Facebook group. That's when the sightings have been the most active, it seems. So I'm like, I wonder, but also like it could be a skinwalker. I don't know. I'm super torn. Like it looked very skin-like to me. It did. Terrifying either way. <laughs> yeah, it was terrifying. Yeah, I've seen um, people have posted pictures and drawings and stuff of aliens that look just like that. That's also what I'm thinking. Maybe oh. that's maybe I'm just going down cryptid lane and it's not, you know, it, and I it's like almost like I want to it's my husband doesn't get it sometimes. I'm like once you see something that's that in that much detail where the moon was straight out and you see so much it like defies reality. So you're like, Oh, I have to figure out what it was, but you don't know yeah. if you'll ever figure it out. You probably yeah. won't. So, yeah. yeah that's Pretty something great. like you'd have in a nightmare, you know, this thing just mm, for you, sure. <laughs> you, you feel this weird feeling. Like you said, this, this feeling of dread, you see this thing out of nowhere, just come flying up this mountain, just boom, 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 boom. And it's right there in your face, 20 feet away. I would have peed myself, first of all. <laughs> I think I might have, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> you were probably not the only you. one. Yeah, I wouldn't blame you for that. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I guess it's good that there was a lot of you, or a few of you there, instead yeah. of just one or two of you. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's curious to say what would have happened if you didn't run, you know? I know. Yeah, I know. And I think about that. And I think that it was crazy because that boy that we were with, it was four girls and one boy yeah i thought it was more one more than one but it wasn't it was just him and he was always the kid in our group that was like i'll fight you like he was always this aggressive kind of kid like he was a fight or flight he's gonna choose to fight he was he was like a black belt in jujitsu at like 14 he was I meaning he was badass and he he ran at the same time as me and when i messaged him earlier he was like i didn't look back i just kept running like he he yeah he told me he completely forgot about that event and i was like more like blocked it out maybe mm -hmm. you know yeah. like <laughs> it was scared i think it scared him very much so and it scared me to the point where i didn't want to feed the horses anymore because we weren't that far from it really technically in all reality if it moved as fast as it moved it could be at my house in five minutes so i you know, my dad, I think that's when he started to believe that it was real because I was not normally like that much of a scaredy cat. We had like six horses to feed. We had stuff to do. We didn't have time to like not take things seriously and go feed the horses. <laughs> and the fact that I'm like over here, like <gasps> I'm a little scared to go out tonight, dad. Like, can you watch me from the door? And I never had done that. And he was like, really? And for a bit, I had, I kind of made him cause it was, it was really scary. <laughs> yeah. It had to have been, you when, know, when you're young, yeah. Mentally on you, it had to have been terrifying. I would have felt the same way. Yeah. And like yeah. Brian yep. said, when you're younger, it's even more terrifying. It's one thing with people to see a Bigfoot, you know, something you've heard about before. Right. But to see something like that and try your, your mind probably was just trying to identify what is this thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're like, wait a minute, I don't care. I'm getting out of here. Yeah. Uh, it's just kind of weird. Have you had anything other weird stuff go on? Yeah, in that area there, to you yeah, and that you've sure. experienced? I've had two things. There was one time, and it's similar to like what reminds me, I think of I've heard on Unexplained Stories or something on Netflix, but we were driving out to go get groceries out to Victorville, my dad and me, just only him and I. And he's since passed, so he cannot vouch, but he would vouch if he were here. And we're driving, and there's a mountain range that when the Cone Pass mountain range, and we're driving through that area, and we're making a turn, and all of a sudden we see these three like bright white lights go boom, like that. Like they just popped up. But I goes, huh, that's weird. <laughs> we just, he's like, what is that? I was like, I don't know. He's like, we were already on our way to get groceries. It's kind of in the route. And we were kind of like adventure type. We'd go on drives a lot. So he's like, you want to go see what it is? And I was like, let's see what it is. Sure. So we start driving. And the more that we'd get closer to it, it would just kind of like, it was staying there. I mean, this was at like dusk. And then it became dark. And the lights... I mean, they would hover and then they'd move, but then they'd, they would like stay the same size, 
and we'd get closer. You get closer to a plane, eventually the plane flies over and it's bigger. And it's almost like it was toying with us. It was this weird thing. Eventually we stopped, we went and got groceries. I didn't realize how late it was. No one had cell phones. We got home, my mom was like, where have you been? I think we left at probably four o'clock and normally it'd take about an hour and a half to get groceries and come back, maybe two hours. I think we got home at like 9 30 10 o'clock and my dad was so responsible like that was not something we did and he was like wow i did not even realize the time like we just got in this weird vortex of trying to figure this and it was i don't even remember half of it it was but by the time i got home it was super late and we didn't even go fully grocery shopping mm. by that point i hardly remember even doing it it was so weird and my dad used to talk about it all the time he's like man i can't even explain it sounds it like you got abducted to me it's sound maybe and he worked at Northrop and he told me I've never seen lights like that. Can you describe them? You there said there were three of them and they were what color? White. And super bright white. And what formation were they? They were like a pyramid triangle and they'd kind of do this. They'd like hover in like little circle formations. Yeah, we've heard similar things to to both of the to the lights, to the formation, to the movement. Yeah, not long ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. That was one. That was one. And the other, and this one has always weirded me out. And I don't really know. I don't, I don't know what it was. We were driving in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of nowhere, you guys, <laughs> on your way to Palmdale off of, I'm pretty sure that's the two highway still. Yeah. And you're out past Little Rock and there's nothing around you. Okay. And my dad, I mean, he is a big guy and he, nothing scared him. And we're driving I was coming home from like a school event out there and it's late. And all of a sudden where there's a random red light out there. That's like rant. Like why it's like a four way stop thing. It's so weird. And we come up to that. We're pulling up to that and he's rolling up. You could tell he was kind of like going to just kind of just roll through it. Right. And all of a sudden I, I, I had this weird feeling. Something told me, look to your right. And I look over and this weird ass gaunt, looked like he was dead i don't know if he was a real person or not to this day my dad and i always thought maybe it was a ghost it was so scary <laughs> he walks up this guy this thing it looked like a guy walked up with his hands so creepy and he looks like zombified man he has no expression and his eyes are just kind of and he's walking towards my cop towards my door my doorknob and i'm like dad and i just scream and he looks and he just boom just slams on the gas and the guy was it looked like was about ready to be grabbing like the handle and pull but when we looked back i didn't see him i did not see him and we were just like what was that what was that and i i was like turn around and he's like absolutely not like we are not <laughs> i was like who was that because i looked straight behind me and there was nothing there i i don't know maybe he went back into the back into the bushes because he was scared i don't and he drove my dad just drove in silence he's like don't talk and he wasn't like that type of guy. I mean, he looked real wow. small. That area is, I think, very active. Yeah, you guys definitely got some crazy stuff going on there. Yeah, I, you I've do. never really heard of that area <laughs> having that much, but I'm glad that I'm glad that you came on and either. talked to us and told us about oh, all this man, stuff. Yeah, we're gonna have to definitely plan a trip out there. I'm interested in checking every out. single person in that Facebook group and plead like plead with them, but I'm not allowed in the Facebook group yet because I don't live there anymore. So I'm gonna try <laughs> to see if somebody will let me in and I'll <laughs> message them. All because some of the screenshots I've seen are absolutely wild. Sure, like it yeah. blew my mind today. Yeah, yeah, we'd like right. to see see more yeah, see as much as we could, <laughs> and very interested in in uh, what's going on in that area and what. Yeah, you guys, guys blew the bit off sure. of it over here. <laughs> well, you did a great job. Well, thank you. I yeah, really you did. No see, you didn't even nervous. need to be nervous. Oh, I was so nervous. I just I've never told the story before out loud, really, except for like a few friends and. Half the time I was curious on whether or not they thought I was absolutely crazy or not. So they usually do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So thank you for listening. No, thanks for being on here. I mean, that's what we do. The time. You're awesome, guys. Awesome. Thanks. Well, we well, thank you again so much. It was it was thank awesome you having so you. So much. You're awesome. I appreciate yep. you guys. And you did great. Oh, yep. thank you. Have a good one. All right. Have a good <laughs> thanks one. You too, thanks, Taylor. I don't know what the heck that thing is. I I thought uh, maybe. I don't either. I a Bigfoot doing a spider know. crawl at first, but the way she described it, no. The way she described it, though, that was... What is it? It could have been, very easily been a skinwalker. Yeah. 
have to go with that at this point. What is going on in this world, man? Where are these things coming know. from? Are they crawling out from the inside of the earth? It's I'm telling you, man, the veil is getting becoming... thinner. It's, it's, the veil is getting thinner, I'm telling oh, you. Oh, man. What the heck? Shit, it's, some, it's about to happen. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> at least let me see a Bigfoot first. Oh, you'll see one. Not a dog, man. <laughs> Death by dog, man. You might be fighting with one. Death by dog, man. Well, that'll be a good one. I'll take him out. At least one or two of them. <laughs> the ones who can rip trees out of the ground. <laughs> you can take them out. <laughs> All right, listeners, thanks for listening. We appreciate it so much. I mean, guys, being here for us, it just means everything to us. We really say, we say it every week, but it really, really does. So appreciate it. Yeah, man, we love it. If you're enjoying the show, check out our website, www.crypticcreatures.net. And you can always drop us an email at info at crypticcreatures.co. Right on, brother. Another good episode. Appreciate your time. Thanks for hanging out with me. Always fun, man. All right, let's get out of here. Yep. See ya. See ya.